welcome to round two of the World Endurance Championship. For this one, we've made it to Spa, a very sunny Spa. Well, it is at the moment, but as we know, anything can happen here. However, our drivers are still very much looking forward to this one. Every driver in our team loves Spa, it's a great track and I think it suits uh, the World Endurance Championship very well, so it's a great preparation for Le Mans as well. between wanting to be quick in sector one or wanting to be quick in sector two. Uh, and then there is also the trade-off of uh, being able to overtake or not. So yeah, it's always difficult to kind of, you know, set up the car in the, in the perfect way in terms of downfalls. With the new rules, we have to do a double stint here, which in the past we just managed, I think, once or twice, and that's going to be for the entire race. So we will have to make sure we keep the tires alive for many laps. It starts with coming out of the first corner. So the first goal is to try to get a very good exit. And then you, um, you don't see it in the first moment when you exit the first corner, but then when you go down there, then you just see this massive compression. And from our cars, you cannot see the top, you know, because of the, the windscreen. So you sort of go in there and are always trying to look as far ahead. And then you just see the skyline for the moment. And then, you know, your stomach's coming up and then back down. So um, it's a fantastic sensation. Fans streaming into the circuit, a chance to see the fabulous machinery up close and meet the drivers. Seeing those cars at, at the best track in the world is just amazing. There's plenty to see and do around the paddock. It's amazing uh, to see it live and it's a completely different um, experience than just watching it on TV, so I'm super excited. And for the drivers, a chance to meet the fans as well. Yeah, it's nice to see some, so much crowd. It's always a pleasure to come here in Spa. You know, the track is special and the fans are always uh, coming by, by a lot. So it's really nice to be here and looking forward to this nice race. As we saw this morning, a long queue before coming inside the track. So good weather. New, new challenge for me, new category, a lot of fights, so we will see, I hope I will enjoy it. All ready for the day, uh, very sunny weather today, so, so nice part with this sun, and uh, all is ready, yes. The Belgian people are really motorsport fanatics and understand a lot about motorsport, they are proud to have such a great racetrack, so we can feel this uh, special atmosphere here. so impressive you get to walk around you get to meet the stars you get to meet the managers you know you can't ask for more really can you
next exit is open, the track is all yours, gentlemen. The time for fun is over, and now the focus changes. Not all the drivers on the grid will be racing. Some are here to watch, like Mark Webber. As usual, traffic will be a roll for, for, for the P1 cars when they come around for the first few laps on that. And then trying to make the tyres. It sounds a little bit boring, but it's not. The drivers are going to really push as hard as possible, but then find the right balance to really uh, get the most out of trying to double stint some of these tyres and getting the, the, car, the car in a good window for the second part of the stint. So um, that's when the race will really come alive, a bit of strategy, but I really predict Super, super, it'll be tight. It's going to be really tight all the way to the end. Uh, so, yeah, it's awesome. I'm looking forward to seeing it. <laughs> Man who's seen it all before and is still part of a Porsche family. Legendary Hans-Joachim Stuck has plenty of thoughts before the race. Qualifying yesterday very close together and I expect a great fight today with Toyota having a third chance with our aerodynamic uh, uh, downforce configuration. Great weather, always everything is mixed for a great race, you know. Taking a look at the grid, pole position for the second time this season in the GTE AM class going to the 98 Aston Martin. Pedro Lamy starting his 60th race for AMR. And in the GTE Pro class, Ferrari's number 71 car on pole position, but the Fords right behind. Today especially is a new temperature for us, for all the team, it's much warmer than compared to yesterday. And uh, we will see anyway, I feel the car very good, even now, uh, just uh, there is uh, more wind respect to yesterday, so we need to, to, to be focused and not do a mistake. LMP2 pole for the second race in a row, going to the G-Drive team with their Orica chassis. In the LMP1 class, Jose Maria Lopez still not fit after his Silverstone crash. Teammates Kamui Kobayashi and Mike Conway line up second on the grid. It's been uh, tricky picking the right tyres and um, yeah, um, we'll see over the double stint on who's got the, you know, the favourable package for that. So, uh, but you know, it's good to see the speed from uh, the Porsche yesterday, surprising and, um, and obviously our sister car as well, very fast. So yeah. It's going to be exciting, pretty close, and um, yeah, it's going to unfold in the next few hours. Pole position goes to the number one Porsche, and for the first time in his Porsche career, Andre Lotterer will start at the head of the field. Amazing today here, uh, great atmosphere here in Spa, fantastic race. I think with Le Mans, it's the two best races in the WC. For me, it's awesome to have this as a home race, so the atmosphere is always great. And yeah, yesterday, uh, Neil and me, we managed to qualify uh, the car in first position. We knew it was going to be tough. Uh, didn't expect to be on pole, but uh, finally the performance was high. And I think the battle will be really fierce with the Toyotas today. Clearing the grid, it's time for the Grand Marshal to wave the field away. A familiar face, nine-time Le Mans winner, Tom Christensen. It's very, very good. And you see the LMP2 cars with the regulation, they are faster more cars, uh, the GT, the LM cars, now they have the chance to fight for a, a real world championship like what we have done in LMP for, for, for several years and for a driver there's nothing better. I mean, you feel that energy in, in the field and uh, for sure they are closely matched. It was a very good race with Porsche and Toyota. It looks like Toyota has a little bit of the upper hand, but then again, Porsche is on pole here, so I look forward to see it and it's close to the big race. <laughs>
Green flag on the grid. Green flag on the grid. Mr. Tom Christensen waving the green flag on the grid for the start of the formation lap for the six hours of spa. Formation lap is on the road. Nerves jangling, but finally it is time to get the race underway. One of the world's great racetracks and nervous anticipation from all of the teams up and down the grid. Let's go racing, the red lights are on, Andre Lotterer, car number one, leads the field, the Toyotas fan out behind him, will they take the lead into the first corner, a lunge, down the inside from Nico Lapierre, misjudged, he shoots off track, Lotterer leads for Porsche, as Lapierre rejoins just ahead of the LMP2 field, monster lock up down the inside on the very first turn, and that is not going to help his tyres, a wry smile in the Toyota garage, Porsche number one with the lead. They managed to get the best laps in qualifying, but all the Toyotas had problems. The LMP2 field sweeps through the fabulous Eau Rouge, and then the long climb up the Kemmel Strait. The number nine Toyota, their third Le Mans entry in full low down four spec, harassing the rear of the number two Porsche of Brendan Hartley. At a two-way battle, number 35, Nelson Pansiotici just ahead of Jean-Eric Verne's number 24 car in the LMP2 class. James Rossiter's lime green highlighted by Coles car, one of the LMP1 machines, didn't qualify strongly but should be quicker. Wheel-to-wheel -wheel action throughout the field, on board with Porsche number two, fourth place for Brendan Hartley. And already, just a couple of laps in, the scene has been set for the race, Porsche versus Toyota. But can Toyota produce race pace in the warmer conditions? Good job, sir. Good job. Just watch out, rear tyre pressure. Is it still a little bit on the low side through our roof? Track temperatures in free practice when they were setting the car up, 14 or 15 degrees. In the race, 32, 33 degrees. That's changing the balance of all the cars. GTE Pro Battle, lead battle is five cars strong, Ferrari ahead of the two Fords that were the dominant force at Silverstone, and the Porsche hanging on in there as well with Richard Leitz. Ford the strongest team in Silverstone at round one, Porsche were right there as well, but is this circuit going to suit the Ferrari better? Battle for second in GTE Am. Checkerboard Porsche of Christian Reed dicing with Francesco Castellacci in the silver Ferrari. Fourth place battle in LMP2, Nelson Panciatici holding off Nelson Piquet and Piquet's teammate in the other white rebellion, Bruno Senna, trying to go around the outside of Manu Collard in the red, white and black TDS racing machine. These cars all Orica chassis with their Gibson engines a very equal balance between the teams where the driver makes perhaps the biggest difference. The Rebellion team didn't qualify well, but their race pace is exceptional. Change of place with the Toyota's number eight briefly held up by the Porsche. Mike Conway in number seven going around him for second. Porsche under attack for the lead, the number one car of Andre Lotterer defending hard just a quarter of an hour in and his one second advantage is now nothing. Mike Conway number seven, Sebastian Buemi going wide, number eight Conway trying to go inside, Buemi outside, it's a three-way dice for the lead, Lotterer taking the middle line into La Source but where are the Toyotas going to find a way by? Look how deep Lotterer has to get into the bus stop. He almost misses the chicane, defending hard. Back up to the bus stop comes Mike Conway. This time sweeps around the outside using his hybrid boost. No question at all, then gets onto the inside to hold off Andre Lotterer. Here comes Sebastian Buemi down the inside of Francesco Castellacci's Ferrari. Cuts off the nose of the Porsche. There's no contact. Toyota now 1-2, Porsche 3-4. Well, look at the way Buemi uses the traffic here. And Lotterer gives him room. There could have been a horrible three-way shunt for the Porsche driver. Very sensible. Battles everywhere you look. Wheel-to-wheel -wheel into Eau Rouge. 
Bruno Senna in the white car cuts in front of Nelson Panciatici. Panciatici deciding that discretion was the better part of valour allows Senna to move up to fourth for the Rebellion team. Battle for second in LMP2, 36 Roman Dumas ahead of the red car of Jean-Éric Venn and they're in amongst the GTE Pro leaders, there are the two Fords chasing the Ferrari and behind is coming the race leader as well, multi-class racing at its absolute finest, a variety of different cars, manufacturers, noises and of course speeds, the Toyotas scything through the GT cars like their Sunday morning traffic on the Autobahn, the rate of closing of the hybrid cars absolutely phenomenal but sometimes there's just too much machinery in the way to make the pass and you have to wait to get by. Bruno Senna in the white car, Roman Dumas in the blue machine, just a little bit of contact in Pou on one of the most hang on corners in global motor racing. And Dumas lucky there was plenty of room to go. Race control keeping an eye on all the action for safety and to make sure that the drivers are obeying the regulations. What a great view from the splitter of Harry Tinkles Ford down into the compression at Eau Rouge. Climbing up Radion right in front of his teammate Olivier Pla. Pla getting held up by the AM class golf Porsche. Tinkle in the second of the red, white and blue Fords with a great run. He's oh, almost touched his teammates as they come up the hill. There's the leader in the red Ferrari and around the outside comes the fourth place Ferrari. Up into second as the Fords held each other up. Great move by James Collado, on board with Collado. Look, Ford's on both sides, he somehow finds room around the outside. What a great move. The Ford's coming back at him, here we go. Back down the hill towards Spa's signature turn, the legendary Eau Rouge, loved by fans and drivers alike. Let's see what Alan McNish thinks about this legendary corner. Practice two, Alan. This is something else. How do you tackle this as a driver? Oh, well, Look at him. you're impressed. You can't believe it. It's funny. It's such an impressionable thing. And as you stand here, I've got the little shivers up the back of my neck just by feeling it. Not just because of the speed, but the vibration. The sound. Everything about it is maximum emotion. And as a driver. Louise, from the moment you come out of Lesseurs, you're building yourself up for it. And you're sort of just thinking, right, focus, focus, focus. Because even though it's flat out, you've got to be so precise on the entry so you don't touch the wall on the left, to the apex here, to the running up the hill, because all of the positioning at the top of the hill is done there. 280 kilometers per hour, 180 miles per hour, just a couple of meters away from us. The other thing about it is when you come to the bottom here, there's a huge compression. It's like a roller coaster because you get pushed down into the ground. And your stomach sort of goes down, you hold your breath, tense yourself, and then when you come up over the top of the hill, the car goes light and your stomach goes up as well, and you sort of get all of these sort of physical emotions as well. This is so cool. First round of pit stops, and like everything else about this race, continuing to train for Le Mans. Speed, but making no mistakes, is of the essence. Mike Conway, the race leader, stays in the car. In comes the number one Porsche. Door opens, out gets Andre Lotterer, and in gets Nick Tandy. The beginning was really good, good start, and the first half of the stint was pretty uh, okay. And then the tire drop came, and uh, I struggled a lot. I uh, have to see what happened. Um, so we decided to come in a little earlier and change the strategy a bit. Toyota number eight, Toyota number nine, both in the pits at the same time. Sebastian Buemi ahead of Nico Lapierre, and he leaves in front. Brendan Hartley bringing the number two Porsche into the pit lane as the race leader, the last of the front runners to stop. And he stays in the car. Four car queue for fifth place in LMP2. Right at the back, closing in, Oliver Jarvis, last year an Audi driver, this year in the LMP2 car for Jackie Chan DC Racing. He's all over the back of the second of the Cinetech Alpines. The blue cars qualified strongly, but it looks like they're struggling for race pace. 
At La Source, Oliver Jarvis to the inside, but Nelson Pansiatici tried to close the door. Two into one rarely goes well. Pansiatici comes right up to the apex, almost ignoring the fact that Jarvis is there. How will the stewards see that? Two French drivers battling for third in LMP2 in the Orange Manor, Jean-Eric Van For Jackie Chan DC Racing, Tristan Gomedy heading down the front straight. A little contact between them. They're both looking for the ideal line into La Source. Lock up from Tristan Gomedy. Van goes back in front for a moment. 34, the top with Motorsport car comes out. It's almost a lap down on this battle for third. We'll take a look again, the tiniest of brushes. That could be enough to induce a puncture. Jean Van still in front, little lock up there as they head down the hill into Rivage. Comedy trying to take advantage. Wasn't quite enough room. Again, they survive contact. Tristan Gomedy goes around the outside, grabs third place. Oh, and a change for the lead. Bruno Senna in the number 31 Rebellion has been reeling in Roman Rusinov in the G-Drive car number 26. The Orange Machine finally losing the lead of LMP2 almost at the end of the first hour. Fantastic move by Senna up at the bus stop, a classic spa passing place. Let's take a look. Yeah, good run up the hill and put the car inside Rusinov. The Russian driver had no option but to let the Brazilian through. End of the first hour of six. First pit stops for the GTE Pro Class. Quick work to turn the Fords around. But Harry Tinknell struggling to get off the pit apron as he stalled the car. You can see it's a busy pit lane. The Ferrari's coming out in front and the Porsche looks like it's going to as well. Can't get past Tinknell. They both have to exit the pit lane at the same place. What's gone wrong with Ford? Harry Tinknell's car was strong coming in. He rolls to the bottom of the hill at Eau Rouge. Looks like he's got no power. It will push alone, it's not doing anything. Yeah, stay calm, it will take time. That prime button, two lights need to be on the prime button. Well, Ford struggling. The tank was dry when he came into the pits. It didn't prime the fuel pump properly. And as a result, the car stalled and then needed resetting. Number one, Porsche piling the pressure on the sister number two car and across the chicane, bumping over the kerbs, Brendan Hartley. Take a look here, Hartley gets in so deep, he's in third place, straightens out the car and avoids any dramas. <laughs> look at the Kiwi reacting quickly there to his error. Battle for fourth in LMP2. Alex Brandl in 37 has just gone by. Roberto Gonzalez in the Orange Manor down at the bus stop. Raced here with his father, Martin, in an LMP2 car a few years ago. Martin Brundle, the 1990 Le Mans winner, ex Grand Prix driver, watching from the garage. GTE Pro Battle, Olivier Plas Ford inches ahead of Alessandro Pierre Guidi in the Ferrari. This car started by James Collado. Louise is with him down in the Ferrari garage. It's difficult. I think it's going to be tough to double stint. It's, uh, we've got a lot of tyre wear on the rear, so um, we're just thinking about what to do for, for the next few uh, stints. Uh, seems to be close with the Ford. Uh, quite good few moves out there, so we'll see what happens. It could be anyone's race at the moment. I mean, the car's working well. It's just whether we can uh, manage the tyres well enough uh, to the end. Hot temperatures on race day mean problems for everybody trying to decide how to work their tyres best. But look at this, wheel to wheel, door handle to door handle, heading down into Eau Rouge in GTE Pro. And this is where the word pro comes in, side by side. Total trust in the other driver as Alessandro Pierre Giuidi drifts down alongside Olivier Pla, gets by him, but watch as the P1 car comes by for Sam Bird in the second Ferrari. He's getting a slipstream off all the cars in front. Goes by the Ford. He was looking to go inside his Ferrari teammate, but the number seven Toyota, the race leader, came through and said, Pierre Guidi eased off wide, and here comes Bird. He's off on the inside. Contact between the two of them. This could go very well for Ford and very badly for Ferrari. Looking back from the 51 car, Bird still on the inside. Pierre Guidi still trying to hang on. More contact between the Ferrari. This is not good between the teammates. 
Somehow Sam Bird hangs on in 71. The Ford back up to second. Alessandro Pietridi to third and Ford going, go on son, get in there. But the Ferrari team were lucky to get away with this and it all triggered by the leader coming through and easing the GT Pro car offline. But look at this. Talk about trust and commitment. Fantastic racing. Well, things not going Ferrari's way at the moment, or are they? Here comes the second car, Alessandro Pierguidi up the inside, Olivier Pla using the slipstream on the Camel Straight to go by for second. It's a Ferrari 1-2, an hour and a half into the race. Second round of pit stops, race leader Mike Conway is in, door will open to hand over to Kamui Kobayashi, and Kobayashi will go out on fresh rubber to take up the battle once more. in traffic for the second place in LMP2 as Hopintung spins in the midst of the battle. OK, we've got a slow rear left puncture, slow rear left puncture. We're coming in this lap box, bottom box now. Albamba, six laps into his 24-lap stint, left rear puncture, and they need to change it. Just a one-tyre stop, no fuel going in. And he'll be back out into the race, but seriously delayed. Heading to the end of the second hour and close to the pit stops, a change of position as Alessandro Pierguidi goes back in front of Sam Bird. Ferrari still 1-2 in GTE Pro. Top three in LMP2 are about to change. Alex Brundle squeezes through on the inside of the orange number 26 of Alex Lynn. Moves up to second as his dad watches on. We're here at Spa, you know Spa. How difficult is this one to drive? I think it's just pure pleasure, to be honest, especially in these cars, they look so good. They're a little bit flighty through Eau Rouge, the P2 cars from what I can see, but the rest of the lab looks amazing. So I don't think anybody's complaining driving one of these. LMP2 leader is the white car, Julian Canal, right behind him, the orange machine, Alex Lynn. That is second place in LMP2, and they are side by side at the top of the Kemmel Strait. One of the LMP1 Porsches coming through breaks that battle up, and the LMP2 leaders are also catching the battle in front of them, which is for seventh place in the LMP2 class. So not only have they got to get by equal machinery, but they've got a fast Porsche coming up in the mirrors. And for Julian Canal in number 31, Rebellion Machine, these are difficult times indeed. He'll try and follow the hole that the Porsche has led, but there's not room through on the inside. He's just managing to squeeze by his fellow LMP2 runners and put another car between himself and second place. Matt Rowe and Tor Graves there in the number 24 car on their own private battle for position. They don't want to give room away even to the race leader, never mind the class leaders. Julian Canal now in clear air, and Alex Lynn trying to reel him back in. That G-Drive car started on the LMP2 pole, and now into the pit to the end of Lynn's stint to hand over to Pierre Thirier, its third driver. Two hours in and four to go here at Spa as the Ford hits the pit road. GTE Pro cars running just about an hour on their fuel and a driver change as well. Yeah, first stop, just went to go and the car had no power installed and to do a full uh, full reset, but it took over a minute by the time it, everything, you know, control, it delete, started going again. So drove my heart out to get us back up and close back on the leaders, but we're going to need another safety car like Silverstone to bring us back into it. Fantastic battle in LMP1 for second place, raging between two British drivers. Ant Davidson, the number eight Toyota, just squeezes back in front of Le Mans winner Nick Tandy in the number one Porsche. And that continues to rage 
They are closing on the race leader as well. Toyota now 1-2, but Porsche still not out of this with four more hours of racing. GTE Am pole sitter, the 98 Aston Martin. Driver Pedro Lamy started it, his 60th race for AMR, sharing with Canadian gentleman Paul Dallalana and son of Nicky Lauda, Matthias Lauda, maturing into quite the GT driver. Despite an early penalty for track limits, this car still leading the Am class. Battle for the LMP2 lead. You saw Pierre Thirier there, helmeted and ready to take over from Alex Lynn in the orange and black number 26 G Drive car. He's just inches ahead of Alex Brundle. Julian Canal dropped down to third place in the White Rebellion. So this seesaw battle pretty much always includes the G Drive car, but the other cast of players is changing. Race leader in the pits. Third round of stops now being triggered by the number eight Toyota. The door stays closed. Anthony Davidson stays in. LMP2 battle on the right. They split the difference around one of the four GTs. And again, Alex Lynn just finding a way to stay in front, but gets held up on the exit. Here comes Alex Brundle. They'll be wheel to wheel across the start finish line. Who's in front? No one. Thousands of a second in it. Porsche coming down the inside is going to break the battle up, but Alex Brundle has taken the lead, at least for the moment, in the Jackie Chan DC racing car, the black machine ahead of Alex Lin. <sighs> Fantastic. Now the teams can breathe again. Out comes the Toyota. Anthony Davidson stayed in. Clean windscreen, same tyres, but that stop has pushed him down to third place. Timo Bernhardt. There's Brendan Hartley with former teammate Mark Webber having a bit of a conference about how the race is going for Porsche. And the answer is perhaps not as well as they might have hoped. Porsche racing a nearly Le Mans trim car at Silverstone and here at Spa, lacking a little downforce perhaps to Toyota, who've got more of a sprint setup in their aerodynamic setup. And the number nine car here, the third Toyota, that's the one that's in full Le Mans spec and that is behind both of the Porsches. So are we learning anything for Le Mans? We're not, but the teams probably are. Buckle up now, because we're going fast into Eau Rouge. Lots of information being handed to the drivers to keep them in touch with what's going on with their team and with their rivals. And Toyota exactly right. Out gets Earl Bamba, in gets Timo Bernhardt to the number two Porsche. Porsche gaining vital seconds at every stop at Silverstone on Toyota. And they seem to be a little quicker in the pits here in Spa as well. Porsche number one up to third position. Number two car with two red lights showing that it came in as the second place car. Yeah, it was, was tough for us in the beginning. We struggled with the hot track temp. Um, obviously starting fifth wasn't ideal either, but yeah, the number seven really, really went away in the beginning. But Actually, yesterday and the day before in cold track temps, we looked very strong, and now it looks like it's coming a bit more to us. Unfortunately, we had the puncture with Earl, which has put us off strategy. Still could work out in the end if we can skip a last pit stop. And the other cars gambled on wet weather, actually, so they they didn't do a double from the beginning, so they've really put all their cards on, on hoping that the rain comes. So there's still a lot to play for. Um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting end to the race, and especially if the weather comes or not. Leader in LMP2, now the 31 car, Nico Prost taking over from Julian Canal at Rebellion as they cycle through the pit stops, all the positions changing. And coming across the line, the number 26 G-Drive car, Pierre Thirier will retake the lead at the stripe, and so he does, but the battle is still very much alive. Nico Prost achingly slowly on the speed limiter down the pit lane, and now he can release the car out on track and begin the chase of Pierre Thirier. GTE Pro League battle is all about Ferrari right now and James Collado with a much calmer pass there to retake the lead from his 71 sister car, Davide Rigon. And Ferrari obviously have taken the drivers to one side and said, 
no more hitting each other. But it seems they're still being allowed to race as long as they race clean. And Collado, desperate to win after 71, had the advantage in Silverstone. Look back here at the hairpin. Pippo Durrani has been chasing Michael Christensen's Porsche for several laps. Finally gets the move done for fourth place as the 67 Ford continues to try and recover from that earlier problem with lack of fuel. 66, the better of the Fords, still in third place, chasing the Ferraris. Stop for Billy Johnson. He's going to stay in for a double stint. Vital liquid being added. Oh, and the rearview mirror repositioned. Midway through the six hours of Spa, 88 laps over 600 kilometers for the lead Toyotas in LMP1. G-Drive still narrowly on top of the LMP2 pile. AF Corsa extending their advantage in the GTE Pro Class and the GTE Am 98 Aston Martin still leading the field. Three hours down, three hours to go, and we probably won't know who's going to win this until the very last lap. Possible debris on track at T18. We have debris on track at T18, driver's right hand side. T18, otherwise known as the bus stop chicane throughout the generations. Brave Marshall running out on track under protection of the yellow flags to remove that potential hazard. 98 in for its regular stop. The Aston Martin running like clockwork, but their pro class cars are really struggling for pace. The AM machine on top of the pile, being chased by Porsche and Ferrari. On board with Kamui Kobayashi, up to the bus stop, Ford and AM class, Porsche in front. Oh, there's contact between them. Kobayashi looking to find a way through, oh my goodness. And the Porsche spins and some debris flies off. Kobayashi, watch the Toyota behind. Porsche comes through the bus stop, spins right in front of him. Kobayashi is qualifying that room by a similar incident. Full course yellow. We are under full course yellow. Pit stop for the third place, Porsche, and for the number two car under full course yellow. Trying to get a quick stop and get the fuel away. Cleaning that clear panel on the back of the wheel arch because that's where the rear view mirror is. Gulf Porsche won't restart. It's being pushed away by the marshals. Drivers released by race director Eduardo Freitas. Immediately the number eight Toyota gets back on full power. Try and build up speed as quickly as possible. Pipo Durrani in the Ford again behind Michael Christensen. Porsche quicker through the pits under the full course yellow. Durrani having to retake the place he fought so hard to get just a few minutes earlier. That's a change for fifth position. The number one Porsche also in front of the recovering 67 Ford. Little lift through Eau Rouge. Top of the hill at Lacom, looking back at Billy Johnson, third place Ford, locking up there. Right after full course yellow, perhaps not got the temperature and pressure he needed in the tires. Fourth place battle in LMP2. Matthias Besch in the rebellion, closing on the black car of David Cheng, the DC of DC Racing. Around the outside goes the Rebellion. Nelson Piquet appreciating that. Change for fourth. LMP2 leaders, the G-Drive car, Pierre Thierrier, right behind the white Rebellion of Nico Pross, needs to get by Thierrier and open up a margin because of the next stop. Rebellion will be held for a 10-second penalty. So even if he gets a little in front, they'll lose the lead. Yeah, I was... Uh... Nico's getting close. We got so many times we got close to the car 26 and just got some uh, did some sort of delay before. So I'm um, happy that he's got, uh, got ahead now. We need to put a nice gap into it now. Uh, we have a bit of a penalty to serve. So um, we're looking good. The car is racing so well today. I think uh, it's a great chance that we have to, to be uh, in front. So 
let's hope that we can keep uh, the good pace going. And uh, I still have a bit of work to do this afternoon, but uh, yeah, everything is looking good. On board with Mike Conway, race leader Kuzuki Nakajima right in front as they go through the GT class at Rivage. Oh, that was close. Still two hours of racing to go. This is no time to get involved in back marker traffic. Take a look. Around the outside goes Conway. There's no grip there as he tries to negotiate the Ford. They got away with that. Perfectly placed, Timo Bernhardt this time up the Kemmel straight, slipstreams by his teammate Neil Jarni in the number one car. Up into third place, now he's the better of the two Porsches. Car in the barriers, that's Francois Perodo, the TDS racing machine. Last year racing in GTs, this year his first in LMP2. Just goes straight off at the bottom of the hill. Full course yellow, gentlemen. Cars have five seconds to get back down to 80 kilometers an hour from whatever speed they were doing, sometimes over 300 kilometers an hour in a full course yellow. Leader into the pits, Kazuki Nakajima. He's done one stint in the number eight Toyota. They tear off a strip to give him clear vision. He has a quick drink as the car gets a drink as well. No tires, no driver change, and possibly no more racing for that TDS car. Driver change though at Porsche. Timo Bernhardt hands over to Brendan Hartley. Two, one, green, green. From 80 kilometers an hour, look how quickly it accelerates up to nearly 300 k's. Thousand horsepower will do that for you. Tristan Gomery in trouble, and that's the exit of Redion. He's gone off and hard and backwards. Taking the back end of the car off, it's still got its wheels, but it's a long drive back to the pits. It swaps ends on him, exiting a Rouge, and he's just a passenger. Well, the team will know what needs doing, and the rear end is getting ready. In the background, Alex Brundle is suiting up. Doesn't look that happy, though. Here's the battle for second place in LMP1, and Porsche may be still not out of this. Early extra stop for number two. Okay, mate, let's try and get past as soon as we can. Track is clear, track is green, track is green. But the number two car stopped under full course yellow with everybody else, so he's back on everybody's strategy. This is an actual race for position, and the Porsche goes by the number seven Toyota, deploying its hybrid boost in a different way to the number seven car. Remember Porsche's Brendan Hartley saying they believe Toyota were gambling on rain. It should have arrived at 6 p.m. It's already 7. It's an hour overdue. Battle for fourth place in GTE Pro. Andy Prio, three-time world touring car champion in the Ford. Right in front of him is the number 91 Porsche. He can't go around the He can go around the outside into the bus stop. What a sensational move. Grabs fourth place as if Fred Makovic was standing still. Pew, pew, pew. Look at this, Makovici knows the Ford can't do him around the outside. Prio knows he can. What a move. Number eight Toyota in the pit lane. Kazuki Nakajima is done. And in will get Sebastian Buemi. An hour and 10 minutes remain just under. Still no sign of the rain that Porsche believed Toyota had gambled on. Have Toyota got enough grip, enough fresh tires to hang on? There's the number two Porsche, cycled back up into the lead with Brendan Hartley. Mike Conway, second place now as the pit stops start to unwind again in the number seven Toyota. And Conway is closing on the Porsche. Luc de Schoenack and the rest of the team watching with interest. And at Porsche, still no idea what's going on. More drama, a spinning LMP2 car, the number 36 car, without traction control, the team have told us. Everybody seemed to avoid that danger. Roman Dumas, last year a Porsche driver in the number two car. That's the number two Porsche. It hit him, so he didn't spin. He was tagged by the number two car, and that could be a penalty for Porsche. We saw him trying to get out of the incident. Well, oh, Bamba just explaining what happened. In comes number two, damage on the nose. They're going to have to change that. It'll be bad for aero drag, bad for front end grip. It'll wreck the tyres. There's still an hour to go here at Spa. Now, has that put the number two car completely out of the equation? 
One red light on the side shows that he came in as the race leader, but Toyota surely are going to take that away. There's the Porsche, there's the Toyota exiting the pit lane, the Toyota with speed, and through he goes to take second place away. The number eight Toyota has already gone by on the road to lead the race. Porsche's incident has dropped them from first to third. An extra pit stop, the second unscheduled stop for the number two car. His fortune favoring Toyota here. And what about the weather? Where is it? We were forecast rain, the first few drops at the top of the hill. GTE Pro Battle, the race leader, the number 71 Ferrari, going by the 67 Ford to put it a lap down. Ferrari 1-2, and in a class of their own here. Is this ominous for Ford as they try and defend a Le Mans victory? Have Ferrari got the upper hand on the balance of power? Well, Spa and Le Mans are very different tracks. Toyota versus Porsche. Maybe Toyota versus Toyota, the last lap of the race. Toyota number eight, the race leader. We're on board with number seven, second place. There is about a second and a quarter between them and one lap to go. And the number eight Toyota, Sebastian Buemi, is being reeled in, hand over fist by Kamui Kobayashi. Are there going to be team orders? There are slower cars in front. This might be the chance that Kobayashi needs. The number eight car dives to the inside and Kobayashi almost hits the Ferrari. The LMP2 car has stayed out of the way and that surely is decisive. Kobayashi can't get by the Ferrari and Sebastian Buemi has escaped. After six hours, we nearly saw the lead change in the last 15 seconds of the race. But it is Sebastian Buemi who will be first to the chequered flag to win for Toyota. It's a 1-2, number eight ahead of number seven. What a finish. Okay, well done, Fab, well done. P1, P1, good job, good job. We need to go to Alpha 1-1, one, one. Alpha 1-1. One, one. Breathless stuff at the end of six hours, winning by inches the number eight Toyota. Jubilation for the squad. Two races and two wins already this season. I mean, it's, it's amazing, you know, but, you know, they lost close to a minute under the full course yellow, so they were just quicker than us. But I'm really happy that, uh, you know, the luck has turned since last year and to, to start with two wins, it's uh, quite amazing. G-Drive started on the LMP2 pole, led most of the race and were in contention all the way. Roman Rusinov claimed victory with Pierre Thirier and Alex Lynn. I think for about four hours of the six, it was a very, very close race with the number 31 Rebellion. Roman had a fantastic start. And then Pierre had a great stint holding off Nico Pross for a really long time and that actually set up, I think, was to be our victory in the end. GTE Pro pole and victory for the number 71 air of course of Ferrari. But for Davide Regon and Sam Bird, it was anything but straightforward. It was a great team effort by everybody at Ferrari and Air, of course. Uh, not only the drivers, Davide, myself, Ali, James, but uh, the whole crew did a fantastic job all weekend. Uh, pole position was amazing, and to back that up with a win felt really, really good. After their Silverstone heartbreak, jubilation for the 98 Aston Martin in the AM class as they claim a well-earned victory. The hardest job uh, was for Paul because he opened the gap in the second stint and yeah, then we just, Pedro and me, we could manage the gap and thank God we could win and yeah, it's fantastic to win again. Last win was quite a while ago in China last year, so it's good to win again. After 173 laps, 1,200 plus kilometres and six hours of racing, less than two seconds between the Toyotas. In GTA Pro, Ferrari with the upper hand over Ford. The battle lines are tightly drawn. Presenting the winner's trophies, Mr. Le Mans, Tom Christensen. And that reminds us that our next stop in the World Endurance Championship is the big one, the 24 hours of Le Mans. Now it's time to celebrate because tomorrow the hard work begins again. The biggest prize of all still awaits.
to the pits. The 24 Hours of Le Mans on 17th and 18th June.